try and keep this as simple as possible because um, we're going to talk about the erector spinae muscle and it's, a, I don't, it's not really a complicated muscle but it's uh, maybe a little bit more complex is the, the best way of describing it. I mean, bearing in mind that the erector spinae basically runs from sort of here to here and it's made up in a, um, basically three groups from medial to lateral the spinalis muscles, muscles so if we work medially longissimus muscles and iliocostalis muscles. So spinalis muscles, obviously spine, spinalis, longissimus, because it's a long muscle, and iliocostalis, because it's basically running from the ilium along the costal margin of the ribs. They come in little bundles. Um, they co-join co with the uh, thoracolumbar fascia. It attaches at several different points from the from the crest of the ilium and the sacrum and, uh, and it will pass up to the spinal processes and the lumbar uh, vertebrae and also for the thoracic vertebrae. So they're quite uh, um, uh, important muscle. They're insertion, well they're inserted points on the, the costal bones as I spoke about, the transverse um, spinous uh, transverse processes and the thora thoracic cervical vertebrae transverse process, processes as well. So basically we've got these muscles that are running along from the fa fascia and, and, and branching into either the transverse processes or actually onto the ribs themselves and, and even when they get further up, up onto the, the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So they're, they're quite important muscles because they're going to control things. They're going to control sort of the spine flexing and they're also going to be able to ex extend the, uh, the vertebral column as well. Um, obviously they're going to work in conjunction with the rotatories and the multifidae. Uh, they're important muscles as well. But these are big muscles and often prone because they're long muscles to uh, trigger points. Bilateral pro uh, contraction will extend the spine. So if I just get you to bend your, your back backwards. But also they will control some of the flexion forwards. Um, they can also um, carry out in, uh, ipsilateral side flexion and even rotation of the lumbar spine and, uh, and the head or the vertebral column and the head. So they, they play an important role in spinal stability and as such they are going to be prone to trigger points along their length. And basically we, we will test them for the same way that they work. We will get the people to extend or the patient to extend his, his neck. So if you just take your head back, sorry and also just extend your spine. This is in sitting position, obviously it can be done in prone, which is even more load and you can relax, even more load on the spine. But it, they're fairly obvious muscles, they're basically this core of muscle running right the way down, down here, and they can be divided up into the, the three sort of bundles. So we now go um, on to talk a little bit about their referred plane. Uh, the referred plane loosely can be described as uh, referring up and out. In the mid thoracic, uh, they can actually refer pain into the anterior chest wall and abdomen. And the uh, pain is uh, often ex um, experienced as rib, rib pain as well. So we can be looking at pain that's radiating down here, down here even. It could be radiating out across here. It can be radiating at the front part of the body. Um, and even down into the groin and can be rea uh, really radiating around here and up here. So they're, they're, they're quite a, a, a difficult sort of uh, muscle with regards to referred pain. Sometimes in the thoracic area they will act and actually refer pain around the scapula very similar to some of the uh, levator scapulae pain. So you may want to differentiate between the two of those. Remember if you, you've treated um, levator scapulae uh, or trapezius and some of those muscles and you're still getting pain, then a possible culprit could be the erector spinae. Obviously if we're going to be doing some of the, uh, the back muscles, uh, the patient will need to be lying prone. The erector spinae are basically running in the lamina and if we stay in the lamina of the uh, spine, basically if we find the spinous processes, and then just come out about no more than a finger width from the spinous process, we're going to be in a safe spot. And we're not going to 
risk going into any problematic areas. Particularly in the thoracic spine, we want to make sure that we're, if we, if we are needling, that we're needling over ribs. So you can actually just run along the, the spine, find the ribs, even a little bit laterally, and then follow them back in. But make sure you're over the ribs so you don't go through any sort of areas. Because, because of the uh, muscles such as um, uh, longissimus and particularly or costalis, so because they're more lateral, you really should identify the ribs where the ribs are and needle over that area. When you're doing spina spinalis, it's a lot easier just running just about a, thing, a finger width into the uh, uh, med uh, from the spine or the spinous process itself. You need to be careful, but uh, we don't want to go through the intercostal spaces and possibly hit a lung. But if we stay, for example, in spinalis along this area, you're not going to. If we do go out to longissimus and iliocostalis, we find a rib and we'll needle over that so we don't run any risk. Again, I tend to just try and pinch that to a muscle and then find a trigger point um, and pinch that to muscle and, and mark it and then I, I will needle there and I will needle. I'm very cautious with it. I will needle at a sort of, a sort of angle like um, a 45 degree angle into the muscle superior to the inferior. If I just get the patient to lift his head, neck and chest up off the bed, you can see these erector spinae really bulging really very nicely here. Um, and they're, uh, so relax. And then I can go along, find a point if I'm talking about the upper back, find a point that's a trigger point, does that feel uncomfortable? Yes, mark it with my introducer. Does that hurt there? Yes, mark it with my introducer. And then Obviously, I will clean the area. Again, we'll do this here. I'm going to just work maybe spinalis here so I know that I'm not over any potential problems like the ribs. But again, if I'm on a rib, I should be fairly safe. The worst that's going to happen is I'm going to start doing some periosteal pecking. I've marked off the, the spine. Again, I'll come out, find the trigger point. Using a 30 millimeter needle, so we can't go too deep if, even if we, we try. I'll just hold, relax, quick tap. The needle has gone in. I'm going to now just take it at a little bit of an angle and I've gone into the erector spinae and I just gently move, sometimes twisting, sometimes pistoning. My way of, of doing it, simply how I found works for me, I go a little bit into the angle, I find a needle biting, and you can feel that now, I'm sure, because yep. I can certainly feel it. Um, the needle's biting, and then I will just leave the needle in situ for a, a couple of minutes maybe. Sometimes you get this erythema around the area when you see the patient really kind of reacting. Uh, and maybe I will just piston again a little bit and put my alcohol swab over and retract the needle. Now in these cases, had I cleaned the area, I can reintroduce the needle handle first. I may have found another trigger point here. Again, using the same needle or you can use a new needle. Quick tap. I'm at a 45 degree angle. Introducing the needle gently. I can feel that because he's biting the needle already. He's got a lot of spasm here. You can feel that? Yeah, I bet you can. I can, feel, I can feel these. I could probably go along the whole length of these erector spinae here, all the way from here, all the way down to his lumbar spine. Releasing. Again, just retract. Replace the needle in the introducer. I first to avoid needle stick injury. Another trigger point if I found one less problematic there. Here I can find maybe in the lumbar spine. Here I can find one. Again, just clean the area. Needle tap, needle has gone in. Introduce it, maybe lead it, leave it for a couple of minutes. Some people put little clips on these. Uh, may, maybe find, put two needles in and put a clip on it and pass a TENS machine, TENS uh, current through it, or um, some of the electrotherapy currents through the needles. Uh, makes makes the muscle twitch a little bit when I'm trying to release the muscle, so I don't do that so much. But uh, I have done it.
and it can be quite useful. And again, alcohol swab, clean the area, ischemic compression, and that's the erector spinae. And we can do those all the way along the length of the, of the spine. Again, we can come out and do them laterally, find the ribs, I found the rib there, I come in, I find the muscle, and then I'll work on the muscle just here. So these are the erectus spinae, and now we're going to go on and discuss quadratus lumborum.